Okay, so the topic of this screencast is variables in JavaScript. And to talk about this, we're going to have to talk about a couple of things like uh, declaring variables, assigning values to variables, and data types. So let's just quickly run through what these things actually mean. So first, let me just say that variables, variables uh, are like boxes, okay? Just like a box. So in this box, uh, that the zero sort of represents a box, right? So in this box, you can put anything, right? So we have, we have a box here and we'll assign this box some kind of value. So the so variables are like boxes. Variables are like boxes in which you can put any kind of value, okay? And what is a value? Value is something that is of some kind of data type, right? So when we talk about declaring variables, we're saying that we're declaring the existence of some kind of valuable. We're saying that a box exists. We're saying that some kind of box exists. And when we're assigning a value to a variable, we put something in the box, okay? And when we talk about data types, we talk about what is it uh, we put in the box, right? So when we declare a variable, we say that we have some kind of a box. When we assign a value to the variable, we say that we want to put something inside of the box. And when we say that we, the, the value that we put into the variable is of some kind of data type, then we describe what it, it is that we put inside the box. Okay, so let's actually get coding. Okay, so for the sake of the screencast, I'm using Google Chrome as a browser because Google Chrome has very nice developer tools. Now, all, almost all modern browsers now have developer tools and almost all modern browsers that have developer tools now has an interactive JavaScript console. So to get to the developer tools in Chrome, what you can do is you can just right click and say inspect element, or if you're on a Mac, press command, alt, and then I. So I'll just uh, bring these tools up a bit so we can see a bit more. You can see that I was on a page that didn't even exist because uh, we don't actually care about whatever page we're on now. We just want to use the developer tools. So I'm going to glance over all of the stuff that you can do with the with these developer tools and just focus on the fact that it has an interactive JavaScript console. So let me just zoom in here. Uh, what I'll click is that I'll click this tab saying console. Now, what we get now is again an interactive JavaScript console, a JavaScript interpreter in the browser. Uh, let me first just bump up the font size so we can see what we're doing. And what happens now, what happens here is that if I say, for example, one plus one semicolon and hit enter, this uh, interpreter is going to respond with two. Because now we're talking in the language of JavaScript and I'm saying, I'm saying take the number one and take the number one and add these two together using the plus operator and then terminate this line with semicolon. So what the console does is that it takes every line that we put in and evaluates these expressions and gives us the result. So now saying one plus one, uh, it returns two. Please note that you should terminate every line in JavaScript with a semicolon, but since JavaScript is a slightly forgiving language, it goes to show that you could, I mean, you could do something like one plus one and omit the semicolon, it's still going to respond with two. Now, you want to terminate every line with a semicolon because if you're in a real world project and you forget a semicolon, the errors might cascade and you might get into deep troubles. So just because you can do something uh, incorrectly doesn't mean you should do something incorrectly. However, let's now talk about variables. So the console knows about the number one. The console also knows about the number one, two, three, right? But uh, the console doesn't know about the variable a. So if I just say a semicolon, it's going to say reference error, hello, a is not defined. You have no such thing that is called a. Let me just down the font size a bit. So now we get into the concept of variables. So please remember that we talked about that you can declare variables and you can assign values to variables and these values are of data types. So uh, let's now declare a variable because what we're doing now is that we're asking the console about A, assuming there is a variable called A, however there is no such box, there is no such variable yet called A. So let's say var A semicolon. Now we're saying define a variable and we'll call this variable a. So this could have been var or var cat or hello or whatever, 
But the important thing to note here is that we're using the keyword var. So var says, I want to create a box. I want to create a variable, and I want to call this variable a. And then I terminate this line with semicolon. And the reason this interpreter responds with undefined, you can sort of ignore for now. The reason is that every time we input an expression into this console, it's going to respond with whatever that expression evaluates to. So declaring a variable without assigning it a value evaluates to undefined. However, why that is, we can sort of ignore for now. So if I now ask the console about a, I say a semicolon, it's going to give me undefined. Please note the difference. First I said a semicolon, and we got a reference error saying that, hey, a is not defined. But now when I say a, a semicolon, we actually get undefined. So this is a bit counterintuitive, but let's, let's think about this. So just saying a before we have defined anything called a, it's going to throw an exception. It's going to say that, hey, a does not exist. Maybe, maybe a better error than is not defined would be does not exist, right? However, now we've, uh, here we've said that there is a variable called a. We're saying var a semicolon. There exists a box which is called a. Now when we ask for a, it's going to respond with undefined, right? Because a is in some sense defined, it's declared, right? It's not defined, but it's declared as a variable. But since a doesn't hold anything, since we haven't defined what a is, we get undefined. So again, going back to these texts, we've declared the variable, so there exists a box, but we haven't assigned assigned any kind of value to the variable, we haven't put anything in the box, so the box is completely empty, and this is the reason it's undefined. Again, if I say b, we're going to get reference error, b is not defined, because we haven't defined b, we have only defined a, but b doesn't exist, so we would have to say var b, semicolon, now b exists, and if I say b, we now get undefined and not a reference error. So this is declaring variables. Now let's actually put something in this variable. So let's take a. Note now that I'm not saying var a, because a already exists, so now we can just say a, okay? So I'm saying a equals one, semicolon. If I now say a, the console is responding with one. Please note before that when I said a, it responded with undefined. But now, when I say a, it responds with one, because a contains one. We have a box called a, and inside the box of a, we've put the number one. Let's do this again. I have a, and I'll put the number one, two, three. And if I now say a, we get one, two, three, right? We're changing the value of a now. I say a is three, two, one. If I now ask for a, I'm going to get three, two, one. Now we're just using numbers, but I could put another expression. I could put something like hello world. I could put a string inside of a. So now if I say a, I'm going to get hello one, hello world. Let's do the same thing for b. b is 9999. So if I say b, I get 9999. So let's, let's do something different. Uh, maybe you remember from the beginning that we said one plus one semicolon. Then we get two, right? This works obviously for any expression. So we could say 100 plus 200, then we get 300. Now let's, let's do something like this. Let's put uh, 1 into a, and let's put 1 into b. And then let's say a plus b. Now we're getting 2, right? Because a contains 1, and b contains 1. So this, this expression evaluates to take the contents out of a, which is 1, and add that to the contents of b, which is 1. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's, let's change a into 12. Let's change b into 200, right? And let's say a plus b. Now we have 212. So we've talked about declaring variables. We've talked about assigning values to variables, right? We've talked about declaring uh, the variable x. And then we've talked about assigning a value to the variable x. But okay, if we have declaring and we have assigning, then we can actually do both of them at the same time. So let's say something like var x equals one, two, three. So note here that we're declaring the variable and at the same time, we're assigning the value one, two, three. Now this work, works just as well. So if I ask for x, I get one, two, three. 
Now let's define y as 3 to 1. And we now have x and we now have y. So going back, we have declared variables, which was saying something like var x. We have assigned values to variables, which was like saying that x equals 1. Okay, but now let's talk about data types. Okay, so data types is the idea of what is the type of the thing that we're storing inside the box. Let me just clear this up. So what did we put in x? In x we put 1, 2, 3. Now this is of a numerical type, right? The thing we put in y is also a number, right? So uh, let's do simpler numbers. If we say that x is 1, y is 1, right? And then we do x plus y, we get 2, right? Because x is 1, y is 1. So if we say x plus y, obviously we get 1 plus 1. We get 2. Now, to talk about data types, maybe this is the easiest uh, way to understand this. If we, instead of saving 1 into x, we save the string 1, please note the quotation marks, and in y we save the string 1. Okay? If I now say x plus y, uh, we don't get 2, we get the string 11. Okay? To illustrate this better, let's, let's just do this. One, if we say 1 plus 1, we get 2. However, if we say the string 1 plus the string 1, we get 11. Because we've gotten the concatenation of these two strings. Maybe this illustrates the problem better. Right? We take one string, which is, uh, you can think of strings as text. We take one string and concatenate this one string with the other string. Right? So, hello plus world gives us hello world. Right? 1, 2, 3 plus 1, 2, 3 as strings gives us 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Whereas if we use numbers, 1, 2, 3 plus 1, 2, 3 gives us 246. Right? And as soon as you put uh, a string into an arithmetic expression, you're going to turn everything into strings. So if we take the number 1, 2, 3 plus the string 1, 2, 3, we're still going to get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Because this number was turned into a string because the interpreter understood that this is a string, so to uh, evaluate this expression, I have to turn this number into a string and just concatenate them. Let me clear this up again. So now we've talked about two different kind of data types. We've talked about, we've talked about numbers, which are things like 1, 2, minus 12, 12.4, etc., etc. And we've talked about uh, strings, which are things like hello, world, a, and even 12 or minus 32. And note that all of these strings are within quotation marks, and this is what defines a string in, in JavaScript. Now in some languages, uh, you define the data type when you, when you declare the variable. So you would say, I want to declare a string which is called my string, and it contains hello. But in uh, JavaScript being a dynamic language, everything is just a var. So you say, var my string is hello world. And if, and if this thing turns out to be a string, well then uh, my string will contain a string. So I think this sort of wraps up what I want to say about basic variables in JavaScript. Basically, if I want you to remember one thing from this screencast, it's basically the variables are like boxes. You take a box, you put some kind of value into it, and then you use the box at different places by grabbing out the value from the box. Thank you.